in this view. All right, cool. All right, hey everybody, thanks for showing up. Um, today what we're talking about is how to text and set dates. Um, and this is something that confuses a lot of people because you know we, uh, we meet women online and you know typically when we're meeting women, the more natural things go for us, the better, the better things go for us, right? The more natural we are, the more we just sort of you know, be ourselves, the more relaxed we are, the more authentic we are, the better results that we have. And so it's weird when we get online and now all of a sudden you know, somebody asks us a question that, that piques our curiosity, gets our gears turning and whatnot. And so we go into it, we dive into the conversation um, and we engage with the person and then all of a sudden we're getting ghosted. All of a sudden the person loses interest or, or they, they seemed really engaged at first and then the responses, you know, uh, to our response, maybe we, we reciprocated the investment or, or whatever. So we, we engage in the conversation and then all of a sudden we get like a short response back or something that was just totally uncharacteristic of the interest that they showed us in the beginning or whatever, and we don't have body language, we don't have vocal tonality, we don't have any other context clues other than the text conversation to sort of gauge what's happening. And it's really fucking confusing because, you know, typically the more you just, you know, do your thing when you're in person, the better it works out for us. But yet in a text conversation, it's entirely fucking different. And so we're going to kind of dive into the mechanics of, of how this works and uh, why it's not just as easy as just holding a conversation with somebody like it would be in person. And uh, hopefully by the end of this thing, anybody that signs up to this will take something away from it. Um, so the, the first thing to keep in mind when you're going into a text conversation, uh, so presumably you're meeting girls off Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, um, or, or my you know, preferred method, which would be uh, Facebook, and, um, you know, you're going into a conversation. So the very first key assumption going into any conversation online is to already assume that girls like you, okay? So they matched up with you, and it's a little bit different on Facebook because you don't match, right? So if you're, if you're at randomly adding a girl to your friends list and you're going to message her later, that's no indication of interest whatsoever other than she just fucking added you to her friends list. Um, but on Tinder, Bumble, and Hinge, if they add you, that means there's some level of interest there. And so from that point, you have to assume that they already like you as much as they possibly can to that point, right? So it doesn't mean you're in the door already just from the get-go or whatever, but to that point, your rapport up to that point is 100%. And so one of the key things that guys do to fuck it up is to assume that they have to win her over um, through the conversation, or they have to do something to sort of get her to like them. Because we all understand intuitively how fragile these conversations are. Um, because we've, you know, if you're if you're out there, you're texting a lot of girls, you're getting into a lot of conversations. You know, like inevitably, you're going to get ghosted. You're going to get picked over for somebody else. Like if you're putting yourself out there, you're going to be rejected. You're going to have lost opportunities a lot, like it's gonna happen a lot, you know, because typically you go talk to 10 girls, probably only one or two of them are actually gonna be into you, you know, or the point where they're gonna meet you out and maybe end up hooking up or whatever. So the key assumption is to not assume that you have to do anything to, to get their approval, that girls, you're already the kind of guy the girls like. And to that point, if they've matched you, that means they liked your picture, they're already assuming that you're a high quality guy. It's just like, you match a girl on Tinder, so you're swiping through. She's hot. She's got pictures of her with her hot friends. She's got pictures of her working out at the gym, playing tennis or something. We are already assuming that that girl is a high-quality girl. But then it's not until she says something really stupid or she, she, it, she says something that makes it seem like she's looking for a sugar daddy or does something that really turns us off that we all of a sudden take her out of that high quality hot girl bucket and then put her into the, you know, like, like gold digger bucket, put her into the, uh, the uh, uh, try hard girl bucket or whatever, whatever the case is. And so, and so it's not until they do something that fucks it up for us that makes us remove that status from them, that perceived status. 
And it's the same thing for us. So the second you match with a girl, the second a girl swipes on your profile, you already have that high quality guy status because otherwise they wouldn't have swiped on you. So it's, it's the things that we say in the ensuing conversation that fuck up, uh, fuck things up for us. And we don't even realize it. And the reason we don't realize it is because we think that we have to do something to win them over or try to actively manage their perception of us as a high quality guy when already they're assuming that. So then if they're already assuming that and now all of a sudden they can tell that we are trying to manage their perception of us, now all of a sudden they know in that instant that, hey, this guy isn't fucking real. This guy is trying, he's not the real deal. And then you fuck yourself up. <laughs> and so that's a, that's a key thing that most guys don't realize. And so at the end of the day, you're more at risk for ruining things by what you say then you are at risk for actually getting them to like you by trying. So, so you're much more likely to make them not like you than to actually have success to actually make them like you by the things. So you just have to let go of that. And I know Josiah right now, you're the only guy logged into this right now. So I'm really talking for the recording because that's something that goes out, you know, to everybody. It's just something that I struggled with. You know, being, I don't know if, it, I don't know how much you've kind of dived into all this stuff. Is that something you run into also? Like oh, that, yes. Yeah. The yeah. inclination to try to make them, you know, like you or whatever in the beginning. Yeah. Well, I, I used to, but I, I do trial and error. I kind of figured that out. Yeah. 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 yeah but it's real. It's a struggle, you know? Yeah. Um, so, so the bot, now, diving into in, in the flow of this, this is kind of a little bit choppy because I, I put some notes together. It's a free webinar. I'm sort of honing, you know, what the paid one is going to look like. But uh, so I'm going to jump around in topics a little bit, but uh, more about texting. So there should be a conversational vibe, um, including abundance mentality, right? So, so once you've sort of got to that place where you're assuming they like you, you're not actively trying to manage their perception of you. Um, you're, you have an abundance mentality. And what that means is you're not worried about losing that one particular girl. So anytime you enter into a conversation, just like anytime you go on a date, anything could happen. You're okay with them calling you an asshole. You're okay with, um, you know, them taking what you say the wrong way. You're okay with losing this opportunity or prospect. So abundance mentality, and really, and the best way to, to develop that is to talk to multiple girls. You should have a funnel. Um, and that's what online dating is really all about because in our personal lives, we can only really reach so many people at one time throughout our, uh, our natural interactions of the day, you know, work, gas station, grocery store, gym, and back home, you know, you're only going to run into so many people. So online dating is a way to scale this thing up and um, really boost our abundance mentality. Um, buyer frame, right? So, so putting yourself in, into this idea that the girl is the one selling. And anytime you're trying to sell something, you want to liquidate, you want that cash, you know, you're, you're more happy to sell it than you are, you know, the, the person with the cash has the most power. And so the buyer is going to be more scrutinizing before he walks into a certain, you know, investment with that cash, because cash is liquid, it can go anywhere. You know, it's the freedom, it's the power. And to, to be the buyer is the superior frame. So so being the one asking the questions, being the one doing the screening, um, buyer frame comes from a place of knowing what you want. So it has to be authentic, right? You can't just, you can't just, uh, <laughs> you can't just, yeah, just sit like screen them like without any fucking sense or without any logic. You have to already have articulated what you're looking for in a woman, right? So your buyer frame from a place of authentic screening. Um, and then you're putting them in seller frame. And by any time you ask the questions, you know, in, in the interaction, you're the one with the power. And consequently, if you're asking the questions, that means they're doing more of the talking and um, it's going to preserve your sense of mystery to that girl, which makes her more attractive. Um, avoiding insecurity or trying hard. So we just covered that. It, it should be a nonchalant and light mood. Um, and your communication should be concise and to the point. Um, genuine, 
but not taking anything too seriously. So you'll see people, they get into these long text bubble exchanges, like, okay, girl sends you a couple paragraphs and then you send back a couple paragraphs and boom, boom, right? And these things, it's like you think you're building an emotional connection, but there's, there's no body language, there's no eye contact, there's no vocal tonality. Plus, you don't know what the landscape looks like. She could be talking to 10 other guys like this or whatever. And so you're eliminating the mystery through these long interactions over text. It's got to be concise. It's got to be concise. And I, uh, um, I took, uh, there's, a, there's a course called Execute the Program. It's by this guy named Jeff Allen. He's a, a pickup artist uh, with Real Social Dynamics. He's got this uh, course called Execute the Program. It's this, it's this um, system for harnessing OkCupid. Okay and they automate things through responses and they go, they go in and they analyze, you know, how to, how to use OkCupid as a funnel for getting as many dates and hookups as you possibly can. And I bought this course to sort of cross-examine what I was doing because I wasn't on OkCupid, but I was on Tinder and Bumble and Hinge and then ultimately Facebook. And I was trying to figure out, you know, what was I doing wrong? And, um, and, and I have a big takeaway that I'm going to share a few minutes later, but, um, one of the things that um, that it says in this thing is like, you really shouldn't be doing more than like 10 messages in a given interaction. And I don't know how much of a anchor that is. Like, I don't know, I don't know like how much to take that seriously because in the same course, he'll go through and he'll like pull up conversations with girls. And he clearly has like way more interaction with certain girls like than 10 messages. And so obviously some people are gonna have to invest more before they buy in enough to, before you can like spike her emotions enough before you can vibe enough to actually go for the number to actually call her and set the date like it's probably going to take more than 10 messages and if you can feel that that's what's appropriate then you're going to go beyond that but you know this is a guy that's done it probably more than i would imagine anybody else and he's saying you know the ideal is 10 messages then that makes sense so um you want to be as concise as possible uh in the interaction um ultimately you're gonna get to some kind of shit test right so you, so I, I, obviously you're vibing you're going back and forth um you're building rapport um you might have to break rapport depending on uh what her interest level is um but ultimately you're gonna spike her emotion you're gonna tell her a joke you're gonna add some kind of value to her day make her laugh make her smile and then you're gonna number close so you're gonna get her number and anytime that you're asking for something right that's that's sort of like I mean we have to get the number right but but technically getting the number is asking for something so that's when they're gonna fucking resist or they're gonna test you to see okay are you different than all the other motherfuckers that are messaging them you know probably every single day especially if they're super hot and that's when the shit test comes into play so um, you know for the benefit of anybody watching the recording. Um, the shit test obviously is when they have some kind of resistance to your request or when they say something that they're, they're kind of fucking poking at you to see if you react to it. Right. Maybe, maybe you're balding, maybe you're short, maybe, um, um, I don't know, maybe, maybe there's something about you that, uh, is societally, uh, not, uh, preferential. Okay. So like I'm five, seven, all these girls in the profile say like, I don't date short guys or whatever. Of course, I just fucking ignore that, you know, blow it off. But they'll say something about it, right? They'll say something about it when it comes up. Um, I had a, a girl tell me, um, like, when I sent her my selfie, she gave me so much shit about my earrings. This was like a lawyer type, like a Ivy League school type. And uh, she she insisted. She's like, yeah, if you show up to the date with those earrings, like, I'm just fucking getting up, walking out. She, she tried everything. When I got there, she made uncomfortably long eye contact with me. Um, trying to test me about the earrings thing to see if I was congruent with that, with that person, you know, the kind of guy that would have earrings or whatever. And I showed up and I just held her eye contact. And, um, and then she totally changed demeanors. Like the second that like I met her with that authentic vibe, I just fucking ignored her, her right. The set, she just fucking melted. It was like, it was like stoic, like stone cold chick. And then you know, we pass the shit test and all of a sudden they just totally cave in and they're totally bought in. So it's going to be less over a text conversation, right? They can't, they can't cave in, they can't melt into you from a text conversation, but they can give you their number, you know, and that's what we want. So they're going to say something, you know, that pokes at something that 
probably you had to struggle to get over with. Like when they shit test, it's not something that's usually light and easy unless they're already super convinced that you're the kind of guy for them, right? So, um, you know, it, a lot of times a shit test can be something that's kind of painful, like internally, something that you had to struggle to get over internally because, you know, people know where to poke. And, um, and so it can be painful sometimes. So you have to get used to laughing it off, being self-deprecating, doing all the things to show that you're not reactive to that kind of thing and you are a confident guy. Um, so uh, a couple of points about the shit test test is you want to pass it with the least amount of effort as possible uh the least amount of qualification possible so if you're if you're finding yourself playing into the criticism like um you know or qualifying yourself so if she's if she says you know like she's an ivy league school girl and she can tell like so me like you know i'm like a t-shirt and earrings kind of guy so if she can tell that like hey like your social status isn't quite up to mine and then all of a sudden she pokes at that. You got you ha, you can't qualify yourself. You can't be like, oh yeah, well, I have a master's degree and all this shit. No, it's like you 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 want the least amount of effort possible, the least amount of qualification qualification possible. You just you don't even go down that road, right? So what you want to do with qualifying is keep it funny and laugh off uh, laugh off the uh, shit test and then change the subject, right? So if she says. Yeah, you're yeah, you looking kind of middle class or whatever. You just say you maybe even play into you just laugh. I'd be like, Yeah, um, I love, you know, I don't know, I fucking love Beavis and Butthead and Wings or some, you know, say some just play into the stereotype, right? And just make it as funny as possible. You laugh it off, and then you just change the subject as if your brain didn't even go into that insecure space, right? If you change the subject and you segue in a way that's super seamless, it's gonna seem like your brain didn't even go into that insecure space. So the more you dwell there, yeah, so you just fucking change the subject, move right on. Um, another test that you'll run into in these conversations is the let's fuck test. And so I think this is really funny because like everybody knows, like as guys, like we all know, like there's, there's, there's a subtle undertone to the conversation. It's like, yeah, we want to fuck. It's there. The girls know it's there. They've known it's there since they were, you know, since they hit puberty, they can feel it. They know what we want at the end of the day. Even if we are looking for a relationship, a big component of that is sex, right? And so we get into these conversations where girls clearly like us. We're down the path. We've built the rapport. We're vibing with these girl, uh, this girl. And now all of a sudden, in the text conversation, before we've even got to the phone call, like all of a sudden, they're, they're saying something about, yeah, you know, like we should go fuck. Like we should meet up and fuck or, or I want you to do X, Y, and Z to me. Um, and 99.9% .9 of the time, this is a test. They're baiting you to see like how deep you're going to get, you're going to go down this path. How carried away are you going to get into this thing? Like, <laughs> like there's so many times, like I, I remember one specifically, there was a girl that's like, I was like, Hey, what do you like to do? She's like, yeah, I like to fuck. And, uh, and I, and I, this was early on, like super early on. And I was like, okay, well, um, you know, like I know there's a hotel at X, Y, and Z place, like let's, you know, whatever. <laughs> and, uh, and then like, you know, um, I, and she was, you know, she didn't buy into it or whatever. And, and then look further down the conversation, it was, she, she just totally flipped the script. She's like, oh my God, you think I would, I would just meet up with some guy off the internet and blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Like, like it wasn't like that. It's never like that. It's, it's always about, you know, vibing making her feel good, like giving her a pleasant experience and then going out on the date. Like there's very few explicit hookups that happen. Like it can happen, but typically it's like you go out, even if it's an explicit hookup, you're still going to meet up and you're going to vibe for like a few minutes before she's cool to just take you back to her place or whatever. Just got to feel safe and comfortable, right? So, um, so the let's fuck test is a bait thing to see. Like if you're one of these guys, this is a more like, savvy test like not all these girls will do that but if they're having a lot of interactions with guys they're going to do this and it's a savvy thing because they know like if they can bait you like this the let's go fuck test if you buy into it it means that you're not savvy like you don't get it you don't get the way that it works the way that it works is if you if you're actually going to go fuck this girl you're going to meet up 
you're going to show her that you're a cool person, that you're, that you get it, that you're um, safe to be around, that you're comfortable, you're relaxed, you're cool. You're going to make her have a good time. Then she's going to go home with you. And even then you're not even going to talk about it. It's like, Hey, we're going home to fuck. No, it's like, we're just going home. I'm, I want to show you this movie. I want to show you these pictures, you know, that are in my room or whatever. It's like, it's like, it's about the experience. It's not about the, the sex. And if you don't understand that, the girl, the girl can tell that you're one of these guys that doesn't have enough experience to give her the experience that she's looking for at the end of the day, which is the whole experience. It's not about the fucking, it, that is just sort of like the icing on the cake. The whole, it's about the whole thing for her, you know? And so you'll, you'll run into that, the let's fuck test as a sort of more savvy means of fleshing out what kind of guy you are. Um, couple other things to uh, remember when texting. Every message you send is a, is a packet of emotional information to the girl. Every message you send is either, so there's a spectrum of attraction, right? Over here is like no fucking chance and over here is like love you to the max, right? And in any, any given point, a girl in relation to you has a tick mark on the spectrum. And anything you say or do can move it further along, you know, towards attraction or move it more towards not wanting any fucking thing to do with you. And believe it, yeah, I mean, of course, <laughs> going in this direction is a hell of a lot easier than it is to go in this direction. You know, especially, you know, you, you could not even mean to. And so everything that we say or do, you know, has the chance to increase uh, attraction or decrease it. And so you want to ask yourself, what are you communicating to the girl? Online dating is not a conversation. Again, because we talked about earlier, it's it's not a real conversation. It's not, there's no body language. There's no vocal tonality. There's lots of room for misinterpretation. And so you don't want to leave it open. You want to be clear in your communication that, that hey, I'm a man. I'm in, I have interest in you. You know, I'm not one of these people that is going to um, sort of go lightly and try to buddy up to you. I'm not, I'm going to express romantic, potentially even like sexual interest through uh, subcommunication, through uh, mild innuendo, stuff like that. Um, you know, you want to make sure what you're communicating to the girl. Um, yeah, so don't leave it open. Um, let's see. Yeah, so a conversation shouldn't read like love letters. Should It should be more like an in-person conversation. So your text bubbles ought to be short. They ought to be short, not, you know, paragraphs long. You really shouldn't be doing more than like a paragraph at a time uh, at the max. And more about that later. I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of unleash a huge takeaway, something that I spent three hundred dollars to learn, and um, it totally turned around my texting game. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to that in just a second. Um, you want so so Jeff Allen says I was I was uh, re, I was going back over execute the program last night, and uh, just as a means of sort of like buffing up on on uh, like the gaps of my knowledge, like sort of filling it in with some of his stuff. And one of the things he said, I thought this was funny as shit, is like. If you're in a strategic test conversation with a girl that you actually want to hook up with, like one thing that you can do to like double check, like what you're about to say is sort of like reread your text in like a super chode voice <laughs> to like double check the intentionality of like what you're going to say or, or, or like, how is it going to come off to this girl? Right. So, um, I don't know. I can't really think of anything off the top of my head, but like what you're about to say to that girl, like just reread it and like, Oh, uh, you know, like the stupidest voice that you possibly can to sort of double check what you're going to do. Um, and instead, instead of, you know, being, instead of um, sort of just entering into this text conversation, completely oblivious to the logistics of how the shit should go down, completely ob oblivious to, um, you know, the buyer frame, the abundance mentality, the um, being the kind of guy that girls like already and not having to do anything to get their approval. Like instead of just playing into just, you know, uh, going with the flow, um, what you could do is, and this is one thing that Jeff Allen says too, and I think this was cool. He says, you can be a witty idiot. In other, in other words, uh, be a witty idiot. And uh, the behavior that a witty idiot would uh, uh, um, exhibit would be uh, tongue-in-cheek stupidity, right? So saying obviously stupid shit, you know, that's obvious, completely obvious to both you and her as a means of having fun, right? And it's a joke. It's not real. Um, 
creatively dumb reinterpretations of things that she says. So if she says, um, oh, oh uh, I looked at your profile and it uh, looks like you're a chef. You could say, yeah, you know, like I'm the executive chef at this really cool exclusive uh, lunch spot downtown uh, called McDonald's. You know, you can, you can just like totally play up what, or, or um, if she said, I'm trying to think of an example, but, but just you want you want to go to the extreme reinterpreting whatever she says, you know, to just blow it out of proportion. Um, achieve active avoidance of managing people's perceptions. We talked about that. You, you don't want to sort of control what they, what they um, think. Instead, you want to act as though you want to creatively reinterpret what they said as the best, um, as the best outcome possible. In other words, if she says, um, God, I'm, I'm at a loss for examples today. But if she says something that that it's kind of clear that she's trying to see whether or not you're low confidence or low status, you're going to reinterpret what she says as the best outcome possible, like the best, um, like if she says something and you can just sort of, you know, uh, reinterpret it like, like, oh yeah, I am the shit or whatever. You know, you want to read, you want to steer it back into that direction. Um, also making yourself laugh above trying to be cool. So if you're if you're clearly entering to this text conversation for the purpose of your own amusement, right? Instead of for the purpose of trying to win her over, um, that's going to put you up at a higher status, and it's going it's going to come off uh, better to the girl. Um, so what you're doing is you're dem so what you want to demonstrate here is a sense of humor, outcome independence. Doesn't matter what happens, you know. You, she can stay or leave. Doesn't matter. Um, let's see, not taking yourself seriously, relatability to all levels of intellect. So you can talk to the, the uh, stoner chick, you can talk to the Ivy League schoolgirl, and a non judgmental attitude. All of that is, is the behavior in every situation, doesn't matter what kind of girl that you're talking to, that should be exhibited. All that stuff. I'm going to read it again because I think it's important. Um, sense of humor, outcome independence, not taking yourself too seriously relatable to everybody and uh, not being judgmental. That should be universal in every conversation that you have. Okay, so what I wanna do now is, um, is kind of drop on you like a huge piece of value. And I think this is the best thing that's gonna come out of this webinar. And this was the one thing that turned around my texting game. So, so um, if you don't already know, I spent a year and a half of my life just going out multiple times a week. And I was constantly on Tinder, um, Hinge, and Bumble, and ultimately ended up on Facebook um, trying to set up all these dates. And I went through this two-month drought where literally every girl I talked to, like nothing came of it. And it was fucking weird because I knew in person, you know, like girls were checking me out in person. I was having decent results in person. Um, but like for two months straight, like everything I did online just totally fizzled out. I couldn't figure out what the fuck was going on. It was it was coming off of like a, almost like a um, it was like a bell curve. Like I was coming off like a a period of like a, a lot of results, and then it was like, hmm. and I couldn't figure out what the fuck was happening. It was funny because um, my best friend at the gym at the time was coming out of a complete drought, and he was like on the rise, you know, because we would share stories together. I was like, what the fuck? Like life sucks for me for like two months straight, you know. And um, what I did was I bought uh, Jeff Allen's course, Execute the Program, and it's not some featured topic in, in there. It's like this little passing segue in one of his topics that he did, but it was the one detail that I needed to change my whole texting game around. And what that was, was to watch conversational investment level. Watch conversational investment level. So you're in a text, so on your phone. You're um, going back and forth with this girl. And, and what you're going to do is rather than just sort of blindly engage in the conversation, you know, despite everything we just talked about, all the, all the, uh, the vibe and the tone of the conversation, the behaviors you should be exhibiting, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what you want to do is watch two things. And this is, this is probably the biggest thing that you can do in texting a girl. Um, watch the timing of your responses and watch the content of your response. Okay, so you're going to actively manage this to not be more invested than the girl in the conversation. So what you want to do is always be one notch down from her. 
in terms of investment level. Okay, so she comes out the gate. Let's say you match with a girl and she immediately hits you up with a paragraph. That's super high interest, right? If, if you, you just, you haven't even talked to this girl, and this has happened several times, right? You match a girl, she comes out the gate with like hard eye emojis, like three or four of them. She sends you a whole paragraph. It looks like she's like ready to just tell you her whole life story. And it, you know, if you're just starting out, what will happen is you'll, you'll be like so fucking excited. This girl's really hot. And all of a sudden she's like pouring her life story out to you. She doesn't even know you yet. You'll respond. You'll reciprocate with a long message, right? And you'll engage in the conversation. Um, and what will happen is if you play out that equal level effort, so let's say she sends you two paragraphs, you send her two, she sends you two, and you keep going back and forth like that, it will fizzle out every fucking time, and she will pick some other guy that's in the mix. Every time, despite the fact that you're like way more connected, connected to her, despite the fact that you've, you've gone down the rabbit hole way deeper with, with her, she'll pick the other guy who could maybe make way less money than you. Maybe he's way stupider than you. Maybe he's not as jacked. Maybe he, he could be like way lower of a quality, uh, lower quality of a guy than you simply because you overinvested. Okay. Cause she's going to, that's going to be perceived as low status. And cause she has no way of knowing who you actually are, except for the text that's showing up on the screen. But what you have to do at all times is be one notch down from her in terms of investment level. Okay. So with timing, you know, um, you don't want, so I've heard stories from girls. So, so I've, you know, girls have sent me a lot of um, text strings. Like my best friend is a girl and she's a serial dater and um, other girls, have, uh, friends of mine have shown me text conversation. And this has come up where they've, they've, they've noticed where guys have robotically mirrored their response time. So if the girl took, just naturally took 20 minutes to respond to the guy, um, they've noticed where the guy made it take 20 minutes to the T to respond back to them. So then later it would be like 30 minutes and then the guy would wait 30 minutes. He was just being the fucking robot, right? Because he knew probably because the same guy fucked up earlier and, you know, dove into a conversation and reciprocated interest a hundred percent and then got ghosted. So it's like, Oh shit, I got to do something different. And so he just did the next best thing, which is just like take it equal. You can't do something that they can notice. So with the timing of your uh, responses, what you, do, what you have to do is just sort of be engaged in your life purpose. Let that be the number one focus of your activity. Throughout the day, you casually respond to shit, not being cold, not being different, not um, withholding um, authenticity or feelings or withholding any kind of um, um, shard of who you are as a person. But... Um, but being authentic, but you're, you're casually responding to this as your day allows for. So you're not making responding her like the responding to her the most interesting thing uh, in your life at that time. Okay, so that's the timing. Um, let's see, I'm just reading through my notes here. Um, and, and also, as you do this, it's going to come off as you're talking to other girls too, because they're, they're, what are all the other guys doing? They're fucking responding right away. They're treating her like the number one deal. Um, so if you're not doing this, she's, she's obviously assuming that you're talking to other girls, you know, and, uh, and if you're not, you should be working, you should be doing that or working towards that anyway. She's going to assume that you're talking to other girls. Um, and she's going to work to, to become like your number one interest, you know, um, as if you were going to be the guy that texts her that quickly. Um, so don't mirror the response time either. Just do it authentically as your day allows for. Um, so the other thing is content. And this, this was the big lesson for me because I, I knew the immediate text reply thing was, was a bad idea. Um, sometimes I did it anyway because I couldn't contain uh, my interest for some girls. But, um, <laughs> but um, also uh, what I didn't know um, was, was that the content can be managed as well. So one of the big keys here, keys here is to make your text bubble smaller than hers. Make your text mm -hmm. bubble smaller than hers. Like when people, when, when clients send me screenshots of conversation for me to uh, troubleshoot, um, what I'm looking at a lot of times is the size of the text bubble. So uh, if your text bubbles are consistently bigger than hers, you're putting more effort in than she is. Okay, that's a huge indicator of effort right there. So you want to put less effort into your response without coming off as cold, 
indifferent, or disinterested. If you're putting, so, so you're putting in less effort, so you can have like a short response, but you can still give her like a substance in your content, right? You don't always have to give substance, but um, you know, if you never give substance, she's just going to write you off as, you know, um, a dumbass or whatever, right? You don't want to come off as cold, indifferent, or disinterested, but put in less effort than her. And this is, this is going to be a characteristic of a guy that's talking to a lot of girls. And so it's so funny because as guys, we're worried about this girl that's kind of interested in us. We're so worried about coming off as being a player or not serious towards girls. Like we're worried about losing this girl that really seems to like us and that we like a lot, you know, and, and, and we want to manage her perception of us as not being a player that, that we're serious about or whatever. And we're so scared to let her know that we're talking to other girls, but that plays in our favor every single time. Um, it's called competition anxiety. And this is something that makes a girl want to work for your attention. They get it. You're single. They are too. Now think, think about this. Girls know this better than we do as guys, because anytime that a girl is single, they've got all this attention coming to them. If they're hot. They're, they've always got guys messaging them. They've got guys reacting to their Snapchats, all this kind of stuff. Yeah, whether they're single or not, you know. Um, but if a lot of times if you're single, you're going to be sort of like managing your body better or like sort of like prepping yourself for that. Well, if you want it, right? And so, and so, you know, they get this better than we do because they know that when you're single that you have all the fun. Yeah, I guess, yeah, good point. They just know guys are always on the hunt. You know, and we forget that because for us, if we're in a relationship, we're not hunting, ideally, right? And so we, we're so scared to let them know that we're talking to other girls, but that's what you should be doing if you're single, right? So if you're a high quality guy, you're going to be exhibiting this behavior of talking to multiple girls. The less effort you pump into one, the more you're communicating to that girl that you're a high status guy, that you're a guy to be fought for, and it's actually going to play out in your favor. You never want to make a girl feel like she's less special than the other ones. You want to make her feel like she's the most special, you know, um, if you're actually interested in her. But um, um, at the same time, you're talking to multiple girls. Okay, so be observant of moments where you've prompted her for investment and recalibrate your investment level afterwards. Okay, so these could, this could be a time where you asked her a question. Let's say you asked her a deep question or you asked her an important question. You really shouldn't get too far down the rabbit hole with questions and answers, but let's say that's what's necessary for the vibe. That's what's necessary for creating rapport before you can ask her for a number because there is a point where it's too soon to ask for the number. Um, a lot of guys will get into the habit of going for the number too soon or going for the date too soon. Um, you have to create rapport first. You have to vibe first, and there will be a certain level, typically at least three back and forths, um, before you can get to that point where you can go. So there isn't too soon. Um, but questions are going to be a, a, a product of building that rapport and building that vibe. So if you, if you, if you uh, prompt her for investment, so you ask a question, hey, what's your, uh, uh, where are you from? And she comes back and she says one word, Florida, done. Just your text bubble is like this fucking small. That's it. The fucking conversation pretty much ends there, or you send her a thumb emoji back. That's it. And then you're done. If you go back in after that, you're fucked. It's done. You'll never get her number. You'll never go on a date with her. You're never going to hook up with her, especially you're never going to have a relationship with this girl. And that's how it works. You have to manage the investment level. So, so if you say, where are you from? And then she says, yeah, I'm from Florida. I grew up there. Um, you know, all my family's from there. I love X sports team. Um, I love the swamps. I love the beach, you know, blah, blah, blah. That's high level investment, right? So now you have a paragraph. Okay, now, you know, you can say something funny and ask another question or whatever. So you're going to recalibrate your investment level to her response, to your prompt. And you're always monitoring this, you know, and, and, and again, this is the vibe for the initial text conversation, setting the date. This is not something you do you know, with your uh, long-term relationship or whatever. Um, but you're going to recalibrate after a point of uh, prompting them for investment. Other prompts are going to be going for the number and asking for the date. If you go for the number and they're like, yeah, I don't give out my number. 
if you ask the date and they say, okay, maybe we'll see, right? That's fucking low. That's so you have to utilize this wild card. You always have to be mindful of your wild card as the guy, which is removing your attention, removing your attention from the conversation. You always have to be ready to pull that out at any given time, which goes back to outcome independence. It goes back to talking to multiple girls. It's like, okay, you don't want to play ball. Okay, we're done. Like, where are you from? Florida. Okay, fuck this. Not even going to say anything back. Thumbs up emoji or something like that. Boom, I'm on to my next conversation. And you should always be having, you know, tons of irons in the fire so that way you can jump from one to the other when they don't want to invest. They don't want to invest. You want to invest even less than they do. And incidentally, that's what turns it back around. Now, all of a sudden, they're an option again because, you, did, they, you know, a day or two went by and they're like, why the fuck is it this guy giving me what I thought he should be giving me? Then she's back in. Then she's back in. So always be mindful of the wild card. We're almost done here. Um, that was text conversations. We, we're going to jump into setting a date, and uh, then we're going to be done. Let me see. Let me see what. The, okay, so this thing I think only last, supposed to last for forty minutes. We're already at forty-three minutes, so it's probably going to cut off. But I'm going to just go into the date thing and see what happens. See if it'll cut me off. Um, setting a date. So what you're going to do? So obviously you had your text conversation. It went well. And you're going to vibe, you're going to spike emotions, meaning you tell her a joke, you say something funny, you know, do something um, that, that raises her um, emotional level. Then you're going to ask her for the number. Once you get the number, you text her your picture and your name, right? So, so uh, she texts you your number. Uh, you, uh, you make sure she has a phone, uh, picture for your contact. So she's going to put that in her phone book. And that way, when you call a few days later, so you should wait a few days, um, your picture is going to come up in her phone and she's not going to ignore it, right? She's going to remember who you are. Um, so you're going to vibe for 15 minutes over the phone. You can have a real phone conversation. You're going to showcase a little bit of your personality and then you're going to cut it off at a high point. You're going to leave something wanting. And at that point, you're going, uh, right before then, you're going to sort of like mention the date. You're going to, you're going to say, Hey, why don't we go out at a X day, X time, super specific, right? specific day specific time get her yes and then you're going to let her go and what i like to do is i text her the d i'll tell her hey i'll text you the details after the call so when i do that i'm going to plan it out and when i plan it out i'm just moving fast to this now because i don't know when this is going to cut off when i plan it out i'm going to have a first place which is going to be dinner or a bar where a conversation can happen i'm going to plan out a nearby second place because once you're done with the first one you move to the second one you have an extra shared experience. Most girls sleep with a guy by the uh, third or fourth date, second, second, third, fourth date. Um, so as you go to the second place, it's like a second date. They're more comfortable. You have a shared experience. You're more likely to hook up. The second place should be something fun. It could be an activity or it could be another bar. Even just switching to like a second restaurant is better than staying at the first one. So you always want to have that as a second component to your dating plan. Um, and then you want this to be near your place. So ideally, once you leave the second place, you go to the third place. And, you know, by the way, that's your bedroom. <laughs> and, uh, and you want to be leading her from one place to the next. So, so that is setting a date. Um, we're going to do another webinar. that's going to be a paid one. Uh, the date itself, um, running it from point A to point B. And uh, this is sort of my way of uh, owning the texting and uh, uh, setting the date conversation. Um, looks like you're the only one on here, man. So if you have questions, fire away. And other than that, I'm gonna close it down because it's pretty <laughs> cool. Give me a limit on this thing. <laughs> All right. Well, There's I don't, I don't comments. think I. Yeah, I don't think I necessarily have any questions. Maybe just um, philosophically, like a lot of the stuff that you said was just, you know, really good and on point. But uh, what would you, how would you think, metaphorically speaking, build the muscle memory? So it's like you, you have a quarterback and you, uh, you tell them to go through the footwork and how to throw the ball. So everything you're telling them is fundamentally right, but that doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to execute it um, yeah. because he has, hasn't necessarily got the reps. And God, so one of, point. Yeah, so one of the things that um, – uh, 
I, I used to suffer with is not being self self aware, knowing your strengths and your weaknesses, or um, you know being being aware of what necessarily caused um, you know a text conversation to fizzle out, or even if you went on a date all of a sudden that you know she's no longer uh, showing interest. So um, I think one of the things that I did to overcome that was to become self aware. And to get in those reps um, of just uh, one, just talking to women without any expectation, without the expectation of a date, without the expectation of a number. Um, this is in person. Um, and so with that came a certain comfort and confidence. So when I didn't um, when I didn't have that pressure of asking for the number or uh, expecting a date, one, it made it, it made it easier to approach. And then uh, over the course of those reps, the, the, the fear of rejection and had waned, and also I built a certain um, confidence as well. Yeah. So, and, um, and then mir mir uh, that was a great point about mirroring the, uh, the, uh, the interest, the text interest. Um, I also mir mirror the, some some women are more you notice like when in text some women use abbreviations or they're not necessarily um as smart some women use have a really good voc vocabulary i try to match that as well so she if she uses abbreviations i use abbreviations if she has a really good vocabulary i use i you know employ my vocabulary and conversely if she doesn't then i i intentionally don't use words that I think would intimidate or uh um, yeah yeah being relatable you know I mean? to all levels of intellect yeah for sure right yeah um there, so I had a client uh a week or two ago and uh, one of the big takeaways on the call on the coaching call was um because I was you know we were talking about he, he had mentioned about sort of like premeditating this idea um, um there were some issues at play and he, he premeditated an idea to like solve this issue um, about the next date that they would go on. And I was like, dude, no, like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm, I'm like, you know, what you want to do is instead be in touch with what's going on, what she's feeling, everything that's going on moment by moment. And so the big takeaway from that call was just like you said, it was, uh, ba basically I recommended the power of now, um, Eckhart Tolle's book to him because that awareness, that self-awareness, but it's not just self-awareness. It's, it's like awareness of the other person. It's awareness of the actual moment is like such a key thing because how can you course correct? Like when something goes wrong, if you're missing it in that moment, you can't course correct for the next girl or for the next date. And so to me, that awareness is such a huge component of this thing. And really it's just like anything, right? Like, uh, uh, did you go to CrossFit uh, with Sabrina? Aren't, weren't you part of the CrossFit? Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah. I know, I know, yeah. uh, what's up? Brina Green, yeah. Yeah, so, so like just any sport pursuit, you know, it's like being aware is like, like if you're gonna go, go compete, like if you're not aware, like let's say you're, you, like you, maybe you're, you're, um, you're cutting that, uh, that pull up like at the last minute, but you don't know because you're just trying to crank them out. Then you're all of a sudden like X reps down, you know, it's just like right. anything, you know, like you go read, uh, what was it? Um, I think Michael Jordan's biography talks about the same thing. Like any top performer says that awareness is the number one factor in their success. And I'm convinced right. that having a great date's the same thing. Um, I want to specify one other thing too, because, because like, it's not just mirroring um, their behavior. It's like, it's like, yeah, it is in terms of being relatable in a sense, like what you uh -huh. said with the vocabulary, but in terms of investment, it's, it's like, it's like, it's not mirroring the response time and it's going one notch lower. Like that distinction is huge. So it's not just like equal because if you even go equal, it'll flail out. So you have to be like one, like one dab less. And then, right. then it picks, it takes, you know, it's funny how that works. Yeah. Interesting. I li like how you, um, you talked about ignoring if, if there's something she picks out about maybe, a uh, flaw or insecurity that you have, you just kind of ignore it because that that kind of goes back to the self. Because I do um, 
like image consulting for yeah. men. And uh, they'll, they will be, the, the guys will be so insecure about maybe their height or, or balding, but there's so many other aspects of them that they're neglecting. And it's like, that's really the, the things that you're neglecting are a bigger issue than the insecurity that you have, you know? Um, so this, uh, the same thing I think uh, applies to, you know, dating, like you have a physical insecurity, but your communication level. So if, so if you, if you all of a sudden mysteriously had a full head of hair, you still can't communicate. So you're, <laughs> you're still going to have the same issue. So it's like, uh, the insecurity sometimes is feature, not feature what you can't fix. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. hundred yeah. percent, man. Well, but I, I, guess I, I appreciate would... you taking the time, uh, with this, yeah. this webinar has been interesting. Hey Thank man, you. thanks for logging in. If it wasn't for you, it, I would have had crickets. So <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> bye, bye, uh, Benny. Bye, Brina Breen. All righty. <laughs> Take care, man. You too. Everybody, thanks for watching the recording, and uh, we'll see you later.